out here. Uh, I don't know if you saw out the window, but uh, I was able to go down into our emergency operations center and thank uh, all the uh, multiple agencies, over 16 agencies are participating in the emergency uh, operations center, accumulating data, monitoring requests, and responding uh, as needed. Uh, I talked to them about uh, we're in the role of mitigation, and uh, we have advanced warning that we have a, a devastating flood that's here, but the river is going to increase uh, in its crest level over the next few days, and uh, we're in the business of mitigating the damage and loss and saving lives. Uh, they're doing an amazing job here at the uh, Operations Center. I want to thank A.J. Geary for his leadership, uh, Director of Adam. Uh, we also have, of course, uh, uh, General Berry, uh, Arkansas National Guard, and Colonel Bryant. The Arkansas State Police have all been a critical part of our response efforts. We have uh, Lori from RDOT. Where's Lori? Oh, over there. And uh, we have, uh, yes, there's Lori. You <laughs> popped up there. I didn't see you. Uh, who is obviously uh, a key player in our response efforts as well. We have FEMA that is here as well. Uh, Frank uh, Efries, am I saying that right? Yes, sir. Uh, right there. All right. Thank you for uh, being here, uh, Frank. Uh, I uh, just returned from the uh, Toad Suck uh, area of uh, the Lock and Dam that is currently underwater and will remain underwater for some time. Uh, that blocks the traffic flow from uh, Faulkner County into Perry County. Uh, I went along the levee for probably about five miles and uh, inspecting the levee in a certain extent, but also seeing the work that is being done to uh, strengthen levees, to monitor the levee structure, because that is what is really uh, the difference between the loss of property uh, as, and the saving of property is the strength of those levees. And uh, I just want to praise Arkansas for the way everybody has come together to help uh, evacuate homes, uh, to help neighbors move furniture, but also uh, the key thing has been uh, simply uh, putting sand in bags. And uh, that uh, effort along of our, our levees and around uh, property is being instrumental in uh, saving and uh, protecting uh, the property that's uh, so critical. Uh, today, uh, I wanted to tell you that I signed a second emergency proclamation uh, that raises the uh, state support financial assistance from $100,000 to $350,000. So we added another quarter of a million dollars in our state response capability. Uh, this is at the request of uh, Adam uh, so that we can uh, have the resources that's needed in emergency fashion to respond to our counties our cities as they see needs uh, develop. Yesterday I received a call from uh, President Trump. Uh, he was expressing his concern. I briefed him on the situation in Arkansas and told him uh, how hard we're working to uh, uh, evacuate homes, to uh, uh, strengthen the levees, and he offered his full support and uh, he uh, assured me that FEMA's on board here as they are and that they will uh, be here to assist us as needed. Today, I formalized my communication to, uh, to President Trump in terms of asking for emergency federal assistance, and I signed a letter today to President Trump uh, requesting federal assistance in the form of direct support from federal agencies. Uh, this sets the stage for uh, when we do our damage assessments to asking for a more formalized uh, presidential declaration. But today I've uh, asked him to provide federal assistance uh, from the federal standpoint and to expedite uh, their review and the assistance that they can provide. Uh, this will be supplemented uh, day by day and week by week as we go uh, through this uh, challenge that we face in Arkansas. If you look at where we are currently, uh, there's over 12 state highways that are completely closed. Uh, because of high water and uh, uh, there's others that have been closed at the county level as well. Uh, the National Guard, General Berry, thank you. Uh, they have been instrumental uh, in two high water rescue teams that have been deployed, uh, but also the, the utilization of your air assets in uh, helping to protect the levee, to deliver sand, and also to get automated uh, 
uh, equipment from other states under our emergency agreements with other states. We've obtained assets from uh, Missouri and Tennessee uh, and will continue to make those available. The National Guard has been very instrumental in that. Um, in addition to our sandbagging operations with air and ground support, uh, the satellite imagery from the 188th Wing has been uh, very helpful. The Civil Air Patrol has been engaged that uh, uh, is unique to us in the sense of our mitigation efforts and we want to uh, thank them as well. Tomorrow I'll be uh, conducting an aerial assessment of the flooded areas along the river uh, both to assess our mitigation work uh, but also to start doing preliminary uh, assessments and view of the damage uh, that we will see along the river. Uh, I am anxious to be in Fort Smith where I spent 19 years. I've been in regular communication but I'll be there tomorrow because uh, while uh, this is uh, a, uh, a concern, a high risk for uh, all of Arkansas along the Arkansas River, uh, the first and most immediate impact is in the Fort Smith and Van Buren area and uh, uh, they are working very hard to evacuate. Uh, they're working very hard to uh, preserve property and to mitigate against uh, the damage that we know is coming. Uh, tomorrow I'll be conducting that aerial assessment. I'll be joined by members of our federal delegation and that is important as we uh, prepare for a more formal request for a presidential disaster declaration if uh, the assessments are what and the damage is what we expect them to be. Uh, I'll make a couple observations that this is a flood of historic magnitude. It surpasses all Arkansas River flooding in our recorded history. That should be enough to get everybody's attention. And uh, uh, it was expressed to me by uh, one of my uh, team members today as we uh, looked at the Arkansas River it's a beautiful sight until it comes to get you. And that's really a pretty good warning about the seriousness of what we face as a state. The levee system that was built by the Army Corps of Engineers was not built for the level of flooding that we expect under the modeling that we've seen. And so there is a lot of unknowns in what we face as a state. Uh, the levee system is strained to the limit and while it is holding in most areas, there are breaches and overflows that uh, we are watching very carefully. I want to encourage everyone in the public. Uh, the public, first of all, needs to heed the admonishment of the emergency managers, the police, and law enforcement. Uh, if they say there's a need to evacuate, you need to evacuate. Uh, don't uh, be stubborn say uh, this is something that's needed and evacuate whenever the request is there. We've had over 400 homes evacuated since we started this. This is a voluntary evacuation and most people have been very cooperative and understand the need and listen to law enforcement. Secondly, don't go around barriers. Uh, there's a reason for those barriers and don't go around the barriers, listen to law enforcement, don't try to get close to the water's edge. It is dangerous. Uh, stay away from the river. And then I would encourage everyone to pay attention to developments. Uh, we don't know everything today. We will know more tomorrow. We'll know more the next day as the river uh, continues to crest uh, uh, down toward Little Rock. And so we will have to monitor it. And so we don't know what all the flooded areas will be, uh, what population centers will be at risk, uh, what farmland will be at risk. We know more uh, each day as we get more information. And finally, uh, I adjust your prayer list that we want good weather uh, come ahead. If rain is on your prayer list, you can take rain off for a while. Uh, and that is important that we as a state support our neighbors. Uh, we engage in prayer and recognize that uh, uh, we are looking at nature and its power and, it's, uh, and it can be very devastating. And so we have to take this very seriously. And so with that, I'd like to ask uh, Director uh, Gary to make comments, followed by uh, General Barrett. Thank you, Governor. I really want to take just a few minutes and express our appreciation 
and how amazed I am at all the cooperation with all the counties throughout the state. We started uh, coordination calls last week where all of the counties uh, joined in, uh, also our state agencies, so that we could work through and discuss what future needs would be and what they were needing at that time. So again, we started those last week to help prepare for this, for this event. Um, we have got uh, all of our emergency support function um, leads are in the EOC, inside the EOC. Uh, I have also been told that this is the first time ever that we have had all of our emergency support function leads inside the EOC. I think that says a lot. One, it, it, it says how well all of our agencies coordinate and work together in this state. And two, it really shows the magnitude of this event that we're dealing with. As the governor said, this is, this is a record setting event. Uh, it will continue for a while. We plan on having the Emergency Operations Center activated, uh, fully activated for the next two weeks anyway. Um, so that's going to be a long event. Uh, we have a lot of our levies that are going to be under extreme pressure for a long period of time. And as the governor stated, there's a lot of unknowns. We don't know if those levies will hold. And we really want to stress that people in those communities communicate with their local emergency management in their county, pay attention to what's going on, and if they're anywhere near the river, they need to get away from it. And uh, uh, I want to also express my appreciation to the Adam staff, to the state agencies. Again, they've been here for the last four days. Many of them canceled their holiday uh, weekend events to be down here, and we're very much appreciative of that. I uh, also want to thank the governor. Everything that we have asked for, he has uh, promptly approved, and that's been very helpful to allow us to get those resources out to the counties as needed. So we'll continue to have those calls and coordination. Uh, also, again, want to thank uh, our FEMA, our federal uh, agencies that are here. FEMA, the Corps of Engineers is here. National Weather Service has been instrumental through all of this preparation for the event. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me, Governor. Uh, well, I stand here before you today to, to tell you how proud I am of the uh, Arkansas National Guard and our soldiers and airmen that are providing for the safety and security of the citizens of this great state. Uh, but equally, uh, I'm proud of the uh, citizens of Arkansas and the neighbors helping neighbors because the National Guard can't, can't do everything. There's a lot of hard work out there. and The worst is yet to come, uh, I'm afraid. But we'll continue to monitor the situation working with uh, Director Gary and the staff. And, and again, uh, I echo uh, A.J. Uh, Gary's uh, comments about the support uh, that I get uh, as the leader of the National Guard in the state of Arkansas from the governor's office and his staff. Uh, we could not do uh, what we're doing uh, in providing uh, for the safety and security of our citizens if it wasn't for the tremendous support that we get from all the agencies to include FEMA, uh, 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 A.J. Gary and the uh, Arkansas Department of Emergency Management, our local law enforcement agencies. And I will tell you, to piggyback on what the governor says about following uh, local uh, uh, policies that the, uh, the uh, law enforcement officials have put out there, we've already lost uh, one citizen because of the not uh, 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 abiding by barrier rules, and we don't want to see in, uh, any more of that. It's uh, in the best interest of uh, our individuals and their families. So again, I appreciate the governor's support, and, and uh, Director Gary, thank you for everything that you're doing for us. Thank you. Excuse me. Right. Thank you. I'm Bill Bryant with the Arkansas State Police. I just want to echo some of the, of the remarks. We, we're very fortunate to have a great team here with A.J. Geary and General Barry and, and our boss, Governor Hutchison. His phone's always available. Talk to him, get input. But uh, uh, yesterday I spent a lot of time coordinating with our sheriff's departments and police departments around the state there, especially on the river, and met with some county judges and, and with some mayors. And it, it's just a great team effort. State police has offered all their assets to assist local law enforcement, whether it be answering calls, hauling prisoners, or traffic control points, whatever we can do to help uh, law enforcement. But uh, I was out in Fort Smith yesterday. If you haven't been there, I urge you to go. It, it'll take your breath away. Uh, but again, we're very fortunate to have a great team here, and, and we look forward to, uh, uh, to work through this. And uh, we do have a great team, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, with that, I uh, did want to uh, recognize uh, uh, Jamie Cook, the uh, Secretary Designate of the Department of Public Safety, uh, who will be uh, engaged in this uh, come July 1. And then uh, 
Uh, Lori, did you have anything from the Department of Transportation? I would just encourage all of your, the motorists out there in Arkansas to check idrivearkansas.com. It shows all the latest road closings and so you can plan your trip and hopefully be safe to wherever you're going, whatever your destination is. So thank you. Uh, any questions? Governor, any concern? Again, obviously there's a lot of unknowns, but uh, your, the levees that are already topped, I mean, this is a store of flooding. Thoughts toward the future of how to mitigate this, and, you know, and, and uh, yes. <laughs> uh, whenever uh, I'm asked about what type of federal assistance is needed, uh, obviously uh, there's going to be uh, individual homes and businesses that are impacted. Uh, that's something that uh, I hope that there can be some federal assistance to, which is limited uh, for individual homeowners and and businesses, but. Uh, uh, that's one aspect of, of recovery. The other aspect is mitigation, and that's where we need federal investment. Whenever you look at a Corps of Engineers a project that, thank goodness for the levees, but uh, does the Corps need to evaluate uh, in light of this flood and the management of the river whether the levees need to be strengthened, at what points, and do they need to be elevated? Uh, and so I think there's a lot to learn over time and mitigation for the future uh, and future flood events will be an important part of it. I'll just mention that uh, after we had the 16 flood, 2016, in Perry County, we did invest money in rebuilding and, and uh, strengthening a levee. And I just came from uh, visiting with the Perry County judge and he says that levee's working perfectly. Uh, uh, perfectly under the circumstances, I should say. Uh, but uh, so that investment does make a difference and so that's something that we will look at uh, long term. For the immediate purpose, uh, the levees uh, look good by and large, but you worry about uh, the length that that water will be uh, pressing against them and whether that will diminish, while they might look good now, what will that look like a week from now? Any idea on how much federal aid you're going to be requesting? <clears throat> Uh, no, not at this time. Uh, UE, uh, the request that we have right now is for uh, emergency federal assistance, which comes from the federal agencies. Obviously, FEMA is here, but there's other agencies that can offer support to us. And as the uh, need arises, we want to be able to call uh, those federal agencies based upon this uh, presidential request and future declaration that they will be able to provide that immediate assistance. Uh, secondly, uh, whenever you look at what kind of assistance is available for a flood like this, uh, we will just be beginning the uh, damage assessment. Uh, we have a head start because of the work of the Civil Air Patrol and uh, their modeling, but, uh, uh, but that's going to take some time to get uh, those estimates in and to uh, formalize that uh, request. So are you, you mentioned you're going around with the delegation tomorrow. Is it, you're going with everybody? No, no, not everybody can make it. It'll be, uh, I know that uh, Senator Bozeman, I understand, will be there, Congressman uh, uh, French Hill, uh, Congressman uh, Womack, and Congressman uh, uh, Westerman, I believe, are all a part of uh, various parts of that tour. Governor, we know that the river enforcement has suppressed already today, and I know you mentioned you're heading there tomorrow. What What are your concerns about being there, being in a place that's flooded that you spent so much time in? Well, uh, whenever you look at uh, what I saw today, uh, you're looking at uh, uh, already 100 homes being evacuated. And then you're looking at the, the river rising uh, two or three feet more over the coming days. And you're trying to visualize, will this be over the, over the levee? And uh, in some places it's already uh, invaded the homes and required the evacuations. And then you're trying to anticipate where that back backwater is going to go. And uh, you know, it was surprising to me, rivers and, and, and bayous and creeks that flow into the Arkansas River are now flowing the opposite direction. And so where is that water going to go? If it's not going to go in the river, it's backing up and it's flooding inland. And so that is the unknown. 
And uh, I know that the Corps of Engineers has been very helpful in those modeling and helping to see it, but nobody's done this before and nobody's experienced this before. So that's what you worry about are what other homes, what other neighborhoods, what other businesses will be impacted. Go ahead. What kind of conversation?